Hello, hello, everybody. Good afternoon. You guys, I'm going to give Facebook just a minute to let you all know that I am live. So if you're here, just put a comment um, below and let me know that you're live. If you guys are catching the replay, then let me know that too. I would appreciate that. So we are going today. I am super excited actually to show you guys our new um, two pan, this beautiful two pan here that we have going on. And we are going to make this afternoon this beautiful angel food cake um, right here. I'm going to show you exactly how I've done that. So I have a lot of steps to show you guys today, but this is going to be a, an angel food cake. It is going to have some lemon curd and some homemade strawberry frosting. And I am super excited about this. So we're going to jump right into the recipe, okay? Um, I hope you guys, by the way, have been enjoying the week. I hope you've enjoyed seeing um, our newest tools that we have for the spring. And we really want to know what you guys are excited about. What are some of your favorite things that you have seen so far? So put that in the comments as well. So what I've already kind of prepped ahead of time is our egg whites. So for an angel food cake, you are going to need 12, so I know it's a lot, 12 egg whites. And I've already put those here in our deluxe um, stand mixer. So what we have going on over here is the whipping blade. I've already added that and I would like, I don't know if you can see it, I'm hoping you can see it, but one of the cool things that I really like about our stand mixer is that it has preset settings. So it has custom whip, cream, mix, beat, and knead. And what this does is kind of take some of the guesswork out of it. If you are not what I would call a big baker, you don't have to be to use the stand mixer. And it even shows you what attachments that you're gonna use, whether you're gonna use the whipping one or the beater or um, the dough hook, whatever it is you're gonna need, it'll actually show you that based on what you're going to be doing. The other thing that's really nice about it is it's very easy to move around. So it's not as heavy as other mixers. It's got a little um, space back here that you can lift it and I can move it from counter to counter really easily without having any trouble at all. So like I said, we've already put our egg whites in here. Looks like I got a bit of lemon. <laughs> Gonna move that. All right, so we've got our egg whites in here and we are going to add to our egg whites one teaspoon, and I'm going to use our adjustable measuring spoons of cream of tartar. This is going to help give that cake some stability. So we've got the cream of tartar, one teaspoon. Make sure I get all my measurements right. And then half a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to move that over there so I remember that I actually used it. One teaspoon. No. Half a teaspoon of salt, that is correct. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I have my notes. Let me double check myself. All right. So we are going to turn this on, and I'm just warning you ahead of time that's going to make a little noise because it is a mixer. But we're going to put this on um, whip for three minutes, and we're going to start getting um, our meringue going for our cake. So if you're going to bear with the noise. Hold on. Let's make sure. We want to put it on whip for three and a half minutes. I'm gonna make sure we get that on there right, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and get that started. Hopefully, there we go. Just like that. So how many of you guys make angel food cake already? Do you guys make your own homemade angel food cakes? Um, and who's a big fan? I know um, I love them because they're so light and airy and fluffy, and I hope you can hear me up with the mixer. Um, and they're not quite this I think, you know, some people who don't normally like a cake really love a major food cake because it's not as sweet as others. So while this is mixing up, I did want to share with you guys one of our other tools. Again, I really hope that you're hearing me over the mixer. I'm going to move that just a minute. But this is our new serrated knife. So what's going to be really nice about that is that you can use them in all of our nonstick bakeware and you won't have to worry about it scraping up your pans as much. 
So whether you're getting something out or cutting brownies or whatever you might want to do, it also is going to glide through your cooked bakeware very nicely. But I love tools that multitask. And one of the fantastic things about this, and I really hope that you can see it online. Let's see. And you can see. It has these little stripping poles. So this is really great for any of your fresh produce that you're trying to get off the stem. So I have over here, let me move our other ingredients out of the way. I just wanted to show you how easy this is to do. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick one of the holes that is the closest to what you're using. And I have a piece of peel. So I'm gonna use the second to last biggest one. Actually, I'm going to put the same because I'm right-handed. Well, yeah, like that. Okay. And you're going to put it in there so the skin fits just right. And I just want you to see how easy this is. Oops. Without cutting it. Yeah, that's how easy it was. Well, that didn't work. I'm going to have to show you another one. Hold on. for. So the egg whites are looking beautiful. We're going to put this back on here. And then to this, we are now going to add one teaspoon of almond extract. So we're going to put that in here again with our adjustable measuring spoons. And then we are going to add half a teaspoon of vanilla. Whoops. I think I put the lid on that. I would have been everywhere. Okay, half a teaspoon of vanilla, and because this is our double strength Madagascar vanilla, and I'm sorry that you can't get any more of this right now, but it is really good, and if you um, have it, put it in the comments, because this stuff is absolutely fantastic. But if you don't have it right now, just put it on your list for later, because these come out in October of every year, and you definitely want some. But you can use about half of what your recipe calls for when you use our vanilla, just so you know. All right. But typically that's a teaspoon of the almond extract and a half a teaspoon of the vanilla. So I'm gonna put this back on here um, and it's gonna go again for another three minutes. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to be putting a cup and a half of sugar in here. And um, you want to do this really, really slowly. And the purpose of that is to kind of get it to dissolve into your um, mixture. So you want to take your time and you want to take the three minutes that it's going to take to continue to whip. You just want to very gently pour the sugar in. So that's what I'm going to do now if you're wondering what I'm doing. So we're going to cancel this back out and you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Okay. Oops, I'm going to put it back on whip. And then we're just going to start in with the sugar. Like I said, just Slow and easy on the sugar. And it's not because I'm worried about it splattering. 
again, it's just to make sure that it gets dissolved and that we are keeping um, all that height and air inside of our mixture. is for your mixture to have nice stiff peaks. If you do not get that, um, you want to maybe try to do that for a little bit longer because it makes all the difference in the world. The other thing you need to be really careful with um, when you do this is never to get um, even a little bit of egg yolk in your egg whites. For some reason something happens and it can actually prevent your egg whites from doing what they need to do. So we're gonna move that. We're gonna take it off the mixer and to get this blade off, all you're gonna do is push, that's not a blade, but our um, attachment, you're gonna push this up and twist it and just pull it down just like that. But what I wanted to show you was kind of just to give you an idea. Do you see that? You kind of see that texture? I hope that you do. And that's what you're looking for. The other thing, the other tip that I have for you is to use eggs that have been, I'm just gonna move this aside. To use eggs that have been sitting it um, out on your counter, I also in a napkin, I'm making a mess. I cannot bake or cook for that matter without making a mess. This is just who I am. I'm a mess in the kitchen and that's okay. Um, but you want your eggs sitting out for 45 minutes to an hour. You don't want them warm at room temperature, but you don't want them as cold as they are in the fridge either. So that's going to give them the optimum rise in your baked goods. So what we are going to do at this point is we are gently going to fold, fold in, maybe some of y'all catch that reference, but we are going to fold in a quarter cup of cornstarch 
And at this point, we're gonna be very nice and gentle because we have done all that hard work now of getting all of that air into our batter and we do not want to lose any of that lift. So I'm just gonna gently fold this over just until they're incorporated. I want you guys to note too, if you have saved this recipe, I need to go back and make an adjustment for you because on the recipe that we have in the um, out, well, online in the party, it tells you at this point to add the flour and the cornstarch and put it on for another minute and a half in the mixer. Do not do that. If you do that, it is just over whips it and it actually destroys all of that air that you already have in your batter. And I have learned the hard way that that is a mistake. So what you would like, what you need to do at this point is do exactly what I'm doing and that is fold it in. So I will go back and make that correction um, on your recipe card. But if you've already saved it, I just want you guys to know to, to we'll go put a note somewhere in your notes that you do not want to do that last minute and a half on the mixer. You need to fold it in at that point. Or else you'll be really sad because it'll be deflated and that will be no fun. All right, so there went our cornstarch. Thank you guys for your patience on this. It is just gonna take me a second. And then we're gonna move on. And I'm gonna show you guys how to make a delicious lemon curd and some homemade strawberry whipped cream. Oh my gosh. You guys, I don't know about you, but strawberries are one of my favorite things in the whole wide world. They always have been. I used to go out and steal strawberries from my mom's garden. Um, and I used to, she always tell me, oh, dude, were you out there getting strawberries from the garden? I'm like, no, no, I wasn't doing that. And she's like, hmm, there must have been somebody else that was leaving stems all the way from the garden into the house as I was eating them and then pitching the strawberry stems. And so I had left a trail of evidence behind. So my little white lie of not going into the garden and stealing the strawberries was, I was caught. I do remember I used to go in and we had a bathroom on the lower floor of this house when I was young and um, it had a tub so I was too small to you know to reach the kitchen sink so I would go into the bathroom and I, I can remember doing this too and um, turning on the faucet in the bathtub and uh, rinsing my strawberries in there because I knew I was supposed to rinse them or at least that's what I always saw my mom doing so I went to the only faucet that I could reach without a stool. <laughs> and now I'm just grossed out by the idea, but I lived, I guess. I lived. But anyway, all that to say, I've always had a real love for strawberries and lemon. I mean, these are both just such incredible spring flavors. And I know that we are still kind of, most of the country is in the middle of winter, but it's always fun to look forward to spring and new beginnings and fresh flavors. And I think this cake is exactly that. All right, we're almost done. Like, I don't know if I mentioned, but um, if I forgot to tell you, it was a quarter cup of cornstarch and three quarters cup of regular flour that I am incorporating into our mix right now. And I'm just looking for that all to be just mixed in. It looks so good, it's like a big white fluffy cloud. All right, here's the last of it. All right, right. Gosh, smells so good. Who else loves almond extract? One of my favorite things in the world. Whenever I make homemade whipped cream, instead of making vanilla, I'm almost always using um, almond extract because I love that so much. I'd rather have that than even just vanilla. It's one of my favorite flavors. I don't know about you guys. Definitely pops my list. Okay, I think that looks good now that we have everything incorporated. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, so I am going to unplug Really quick, we do have an on and off switch on that mixer. And I am actually going to unplug this from my counter. And I'm just gonna move it out of the way to give us some more space to work. Like I said, easy peasy to move around. Okay, 
So here is our mixture that's done. This is kind of the texture that you're looking for. Really thick and fluffy, a little bit like marshmallow whipped cream. Okay, so here is our beautiful new two pan. This is our cake releaser. So what you are going to do after the cake bakes, and I'm gonna show you this later tonight, so don't worry, but after the cake bakes and it's cooled, you're gonna use this to release the cake from the pan and you're going to put it flush with the side of the pan and just barely gently go around so that you are releasing that cake from the pan and you're gonna do the same thing around the tube. So if you heard me earlier, I was asking, I don't know if you know why you need a two pan, but remember this part comes out, so that's gonna make the cake easy to release from the pan later. The feet are genius because a cake like this, or any sponge, needs to cool upside down. So these little feet are going to keep um, this off your counter. It's going to keep proper airflow for it to cool. And um, then you don't have to worry about, you know, balancing it precariously on something else and potentially falling over. So it's genius from that perspective. And then the center tube part right here is going to help the center part of the cake, cake like bake evenly. So um, this is going to be a heat conductor in your pan. The other really important thing to know is that the high sides are so that your batter can climb and cling. So this type of cake needs to cling to both the sides as well as the tube in the center. So no nonstick spray. Don't do that. If you do that, it's not going to cling to the side of the pans. It's going to fall flat. The other reason that you are turning it upside down, by the way, is to keep it from collapsing once it comes out of the oven. So it just kind of keeps that cake separated and gives you, I'm going to call it maximum fluff. So we're going to go ahead and put this in here as neatly as I am capable of putting it in here. I've never claimed to be um, <laughs> a neat baker or cook. One of the things I love about an angel food cake is that it's so simple, yet it's so beautiful at the same time. And I am not a cake decorator. I will tell you that right now. If you get cupcakes or a cake at my house, it might taste amazing. It should taste amazing, but it is not going to look pretty. It's just not. I remember when I first got married, my husband, who has been a soccer coach his entire life and was a college player and a college coach, I thought it would be... <laughs> I thought it would be really great to make him a cake that looked like a pitch. So I was going to make just, I mean, it seems simple enough, right? I was going to make a flat rectangular cake, and then I was going to decorate it like grass and put little goals on the end and have some soccer players on there with some balls. And I was so proud of this cake. <laughs> and my husband, you know, he was so complimentary, but the reality of it was, and it was fair, it was a fair evaluation, so I want you to think negative of him, but he had no idea what I had made. He didn't know that that was a pitch. He had no clue. He was really wondering why there were little soccer balls and people on this thing. <laughs> but he had no idea what I created. Um, and it really, it really did look that bad, I have to admit, I'm telling you. So, making things look absolutely beautiful really isn't a skill set that I think I have. <laughs> um, however, it tasted great. So really in the end, did it matter? Because that's all that matters, right? It was that it tasted great. <laughs> so that's a little dirty secret about me. I can't decorate anything. So you're gonna come to my house and you're gonna see some cupcakes and you're gonna be like, those taste amazing. I'm like, right? But you're not probably not gonna tell me they look beautiful, but that's okay. <laughs> I know it, so it's totally fine. All right, I am just smoothing this out across the top. Just like that, and I'm actually gonna get a paper towel and I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. And I know this is cool. It's okay. You want it to be. It's all good. Oh, I'm gonna eat it. it. Smells delicious. I'm just gonna get a paper towel. And I'm just gonna clean up the edges here just a little bit. Just because I don't want like those little burnt bits. So that's all I'm gonna do. And when this cooks, I do not want you to be alarmed. It's gonna raise a little bit up above the pan, but by the time it's done, it is gonna come right back down and be even with the pan and turn out beautiful. 
All right. And then another little trick I have for you. My kids are very into um, Asian food, so we have chopsticks. Anyway, so you want to get a skewer or a chopstick or something, and I'm just going to kind of take it, and I'm going to swirl it through my batter. And the reason I'm doing this is just in case I've got any air bubbles in there, I want to kind of release any giant air bubbles that might be still left in, left in the pan. So that is all I am doing right now. Just like that. All right. And then, just gonna tap it. Oh, let's get right around the top too. There we go. And I'm gonna wait for our oven, but let me show you this really quick. I've got batter everywhere. Okay. Oh, it looks so pretty. I'm so excited. Okay. Just like that. Gosh, it's gorgeous, you guys. Okay. So I'm going to set this over here. It's going to go into a 350 degree oven, which we are like one degree off of here real quick. Um, and it's going to go in there for 40 to 45 minutes. I have found in my oven, there we go. It's preheated actually. So we're going to toss that in. And my oven, 40 minutes seems to be just right. So definitely check it at 40 and see if it is done. Got that timer on. So you're gonna look for that batter when it comes out to kind of, um, the cake will just kind of bounce back or you can put a toothpick in to make sure that it comes out clean. So I will come back on in a couple of hours. It's gonna take, well, maybe an hour and a half. It's gonna take 40 minutes to cook and then I'm gonna cool it upside down. And when it's ready to come out of the pan, I'm actually gonna come back on and show you guys how to do that because I want you to see how easy it is and how easy it is to release from the pan. It's one of the beauties of it. But I have already done this one. I made this one last night. I hope you're ewing and awing on the other side of the camera because I'm super proud of this guy. Um, and we are going to make really quick a lemon curd that you can put on top. And then we're going to make our whipped cream. So in comes, actually, we're going to move these guys out of the way. We're gonna bring in our deluxe cooking blender. So what's super fantastic about our blender is it's not only a regular blender, but it actually has a heating element inside of it. So this is actually gonna bring things to temperature so that you can do soups, sauces, um, you can grind things, you can do your own almond milk, you can even make jam in here. So there's all kinds of things that you can do. So we're gonna use it to make our sauce today. And remember I told you to use 12 egg whites. So what we need for our lemon curd is actually the 12 egg yolks that I have saved from before. So I'm gonna put that in here. One of those guys bust open, but that'll be all right. Egg down, okay. All right, so we have the 12 egg yolks in here. I have also already um, juiced four lemons and what we're going to need is a total of five. So you're gonna juice five lemons in here and you're going to use the zest of two of those lemons. So let me show you how I do that. I already did one of the lemons but I have my last lemon to juice and to zest to show you guys. So we have our little zester grater here one of the things I love is that you can use it just like this on your counter, but it also has a little notch here on the side so you can lay that flat. Um, and a little cover, I'm gonna call this the knuckle protector so that when it's in your drawer, you're not gonna scrape yourself because these are actually sharp. Dishwasher safe, they can go on the top rack just like that, always important, right? Um, and we're going to use this to zest our lemon. But this is really great for um, your hard cheeses, if you have nutmeg or ginger or um, even chocolate you want to grate, you want a zester for that. So we're just going to go and get all this. Gosh, guys, I wish you could smell all this stuff. There's so much between the almonds and the lemons and the strawberries. Oh my gosh. And I, I made some, I might have made some whipped cream already earlier and had like a big bowl of strawberries that I was dipping in it. And yeah, so that was delicious. 
case you're wondering what I had for lunch, I had a big bowl of strawberries and whipped cream. <laughs> oh gosh. Anyway, all right, we're gonna finish zesting this guy up. I'm gonna make sure we get all of that delicious lemon goodness in here. If you guys haven't tried this, you need to. It's seriously, it's so good. It's so quick and easy. And in addition to all the other amazing things this thing does, I mean, you can make nacho cheese in here, guys, or a giant thing of hot chocolate in here. You can make your soups. I could go on and on and on, but the other thing that you can do is it cleans itself, which was a selling feature for me. It has a heated wash setting. So you can put a little bit of water in there, a little bit of dish soap in there, put it on a heated wash, gonna bring it to temperature and clean that whole thing for you. It's so easy. All right, that is good. These are some big lemons. Hold on just a second. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I got a call coming through. Kyle, will you tell your dad I'm online for me, please? Yeah. Thank you. All right. I'm just getting all that zest off of there. I'm going to set that aside. I need a knife. Let's grab a knife. Let's grab a knife. Let's grab a knife. Let's use one of our coated knives, the same Toku knives. The most used knife in my kitchen. I love these things. I'm gonna cut that in half. And we're gonna finish juicing the last lemon. All right. So like I said, you're gonna have five lemons in here and two of them are zested. And the rest of them, you're just gonna go ahead and squeeze. You don't have to use it. But you know, you can actually freeze zest. So instead of wasting all that, you can actually go ahead and Zest the extra ones and put it in a little black bag and freeze it, and then you can use it for something else in the future. So there's no sense in wasting. I love um, using everything, using all my ingredients up. All right, so that is it. And you take it out just like that. Always put them upside down. That way you can collect those little seeds in there. All right, that is that. And then I think we need a cup of sugar and a quarter teaspoon of salt, and that is pretty much it. So let's grab our sugar again. Just need one scoop of sugar. Feels like a lot of sugar when you do that. But it's gonna make a lot of lemon curd. And I'm gonna show you in a minute because I already have one ready to go for you guys. So lemon, and then we need a quarter teaspoon of salt. Okay, correct, correct, All right. Good to go. Put that lid back on. All right, make sure you get your lid on. There's a little on and off button on the side and we're gonna move this over to the sauce setting and it's gonna do the rest of the work from here. It's gonna bring it up to temperature. It's gonna take 20 minutes to a half an hour. I didn't time it to remember. Um, and it's going to go ahead and cook that up. At some point in time, um, just before it's done, you're going to have it kind of beep at you and you're going to notice it says add. And when it tells you to do that, you're going to take one stick of butter and you're going to toss that in there and then just hit start again and it's going to finish it up for the last couple of minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and actually I'm going to wait just so you guys don't have to hear that on camera again. And we're going to move that out of the way. I'm going to show you the finished product. So, here is our delicious lemon curd. So, it's actually going to make an entire mason jar full of this amazing goodness that you can use for your cake. So, I just kind of want to show you that. Again, I wish you guys could smell it. Oh, my gosh. All right. Oh, and we need to make our whipped cream. So, let's do that really quick, too. Oh, I don't want to forget the good stuff. But look at that. Can you see? So good. Okay. So let's do our whipped cream. That is the last part that we have to do. Where are we at? All right. So I still have the older style whipped cream maker, but this is one of my favorite things in the whole world. And I absolutely love the update that we have with the new one for the spring because it's got a little attachment that you're going to be able to put, um, sorry, it's going to attach to here and it will allow you to pipe the whipped cream into your um, fancy drinks 
or onto your cakes and be beautiful. And I think it's an amazing updated feature. But um, these are super fantastic, super easy to, get, to do. And you don't wanna be buying that stuff in the can because it has all that extra junk in it that we don't need and it's so easy. And frankly, it tastes so much better. And you have the ability at home to make any kind of flavor you want, whether it's strawberry, whether it's vanilla, my favorite the almond extract, or chocolate or peanut butter or coffee whipped cream, you name it, you can do whatever you want. So I wanna point out that it has a little um, topper here. And that's so when you're done making your whipped cream, you can put this on top and just store it directly in the refrigerator. It'll stay several days if it lasts that long. Um, in the fridge just like that and this is our plunger there's a little mark on here and it is a one cup mark you do not want to go over the one cup mark so what we are going to use today because we're making strawberry whipped cream is we're going to use three-fourths cup of heavy cream so let me measure that out three-fourths cup heavy cream Yep, just trying to make sure I don't go over. I've done that before. And you know what happens when you overfill it? Makes a mess, that's what happens. Makes a mess. Okay, and then I'm using our adjust, both of these actually were our um, adjustable measure alls. So you can do liquid on one side and your ooey gooey sticky stuff like jam or peanut butter or honey or any number of other ingredients um, right in here. So we're going to add to our heavy cream just a quarter cup of strawberry jam. Use the sugar kind, guys. It gives you that little extra bit of sweetness and you won't be sorry, it's so good. All right, we're just gonna put our lid on here and you're going to just plunge this guy up and down and it only, it takes less than a minute, 30 seconds to a minute and it's gonna make delicious, fluffy, beautiful strawberry cream. So who has one of our whipped cream makers? And if you don't, you definitely need to get one. Get one of our new ones. And if you already have um, one of our old ones, you might wanna get one of the new ones anyway because they have that really awesome attachment. So maybe you can gift this one to someone and then get yourself a new one. Sounds like a plan to me. Oh, you can take them a dessert. You can make them a cake. You're gonna get your two cake pan and you're gonna make them a beautiful cake and then you're gonna make them some delicious whipped cream and then you're just gonna gift them the little whipped cream maker too and then that's your excuse guys to get a new one. I'm just saying. All right, when you start filling the resistance, oh, it's an arm workout. You know it's done. Make sure you pull the plunger all the way to the top. And I want you to see, <laughs> Ugh, I love this stuff, so good. See how thick and creamy and amazing that is. It smells so good too. But it's my favorite thing in strawberries. I hope it does that. Okay, so now all we have to do is plate this amazingness up. And I can't even tell you, I've been waiting since last night to cut into this thing. So let's get a plate. Let's get a plate. And then we are going to use our handy dandy serrated knife. Remember, these are awesome for your nonstick pans and for stripping your herbs as long as you're not brutal like me and just rip it to death. So don't be brutal. <laughs> oh, this cake, I'm so excited. Okay, don't mind me. Let's just cut this guy and look. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Can you see that? Can you see that fluffy, amazing deliciousness on camera? Oh, so good. And then we are going to take, what are those berries I was talking about? I have the berries going on over here. We're gonna take some of our delicious homemade lemon curd. And I'm just gonna drizzle this guy. Don't be shy. This stuff is so good. We're gonna drizzle it right on top. You can actually freeze lemon curd too, by the way. I don't know if you guys know that or not. So if you're afraid, like, oh my gosh, am I gonna eat all that? That's okay, you can freeze some. So go ahead and make a batch. It's all good. You're gonna impress your friends. Okay, there's probably a lot of lemon curd, but that's okay. It's all right. And it's for me, so it's okay. Um, let's get a spoon. Just grab another spoon. And if you had the new one, see, you could just pipe this on here and it would look you know, beautiful, so I don't have that, so I don't get to be fancy, but we're gonna dollop, look at how thick that is, guys, I'm just saying, a few seconds. We're gonna dollop, just 
just a big, <laughs> I'm so excited. Can you tell I'm excited? Big heaping thing of whipped cream right there. And I already took one of our little strawberries ahead of time and I just fanned this little guy out. And we're gonna put that there. He's gonna look beautiful. I can actually show you how to do that real quick if you want me to. But look at that. Look at that, you guys. So good. I am so excited about that. I hope you guys will try this recipe. It's really, once you remember a couple of quick tips, um, well, that's a little bit much for cutting more, but that's okay. We'll use it. Let's take one of the bigger strawberries. Just show you real quick. If you don't know how to fan them out, you just take the little strawberries by the stem, and you can take your little knife, and you're just going to put these little slits in it. Just don't go all the way up to the stem. Just like this. Okay. And then you can fan it out. Oops, I even got this one in the middle. Let's get him going. Fan him out just like that and put him on your plate and he looks absolutely beautiful. All right, so like I said, I will hop back online in a little bit once we get the second cake out of the oven and it's had a chance to cool so that I can show you guys how to release it from the pan. We just wanna thank you guys for um, being part of our reveal this week. Um, I hope you guys have been having fun. We still have more things to show you and more recipes coming your way. Um, and I'm gonna do a drawing tonight too. Um, I don't know if I mentioned that, but when I come back on and do the cake, I'm also going to do a prize drawing. Everybody loves free stuff, right? So the way you get entered into that prize drawing is to be commenting on the post today. So I'm gonna go back and check and see who has been commenting and your name will go into my bowl and I will do a drawing for that tonight. And then at the very end of this party, so next week, we have our grand prize drawing and you don't wanna miss that. Um, I believe it's $100 actually for you to spend on your wish list with Pampered Chef, which is amazing. So to get entered in that drawing, um, you can place an order with your consultant and you'll wanna reach out to them about that. You can book a party with your consultant and um, again, re reaching out to your consultant for these things, as well as join our amazing Pamper Chef team and become part of the Pamper Chef family. So all of those things will get you entries into our grand prize drawing that we will do next week. If you have any questions at all about what we do, I know that the consultant who invited you here would be really happy to um, talk to you a little bit about what we do and what be becoming part of the Pampa Chef family looks like. So if you have any questions, reach out. All right, I'm gonna let you guys go. Thanks for hanging in there with me through all of um, the different moving parts that I have going on. And come back here um, or look back later tonight. Um, I can't give you an exact time, but probably about an hour and a half. And I will show you how to get this beautiful cake out of the pan. And we'll do that prize drying then too. So thank you guys for tuning in and I will talk to you soon.